A self-driving truck packed with beer has made its first delivery. You might remember that I told you a little while back about Uber buying auto. Auto is a company that had a self-driving truck technology, which Uber has purchased. And now there's been what some are, are attributing to sort of a publicity stunt, a uh, a self-driving truck with nobody behind the wheel. But there was a sort of supervisor riding in the cab actually drove together teamed up with Anheuser-Busch InBev, the first driverless truck delivery of beer. And uh, there was a police cruiser in tow. It drove 120 miles when the driver uh, was just hanging out in the sleeper cab. And it's mostly a stunt. They basically wanted to show that the building blocks of self-driving truck technology are there. AB InBev, which is uh, Anheuser-Busch, the company that makes a lot of the beer that maybe you drink, uh, they said they could save $50 million a year in the US if they can deploy these autonomous trucks across their entire distribution network. And that's even if drivers continue to be doing ride alongs and supplementing the technology, the fuel cost reduction and the more frequent delivery schedule and the ability to drive way more hours than an, a, a human driver is able to drive would reduce costs drastically. Now, here's where it starts to get a little funny. One of the spokespeople for Uber said that they don't plan to build their own trucks and want to partner with automakers and also that they may continue to use the uh, supervision of humans indefinitely. I just don't buy it, Pat. I mean, the, the, we know that the building blocks are there for not needing a human in the car and in the cab, the car, the truck, whatever the case may be. I don't buy for a second that indefinitely the idea is to, oh, it'll be self driving, but we're still going to pay someone to just ride along, maybe at the beginning, maybe until the law gets sorted out. But I don't see it long term. Right. It's part of the transition, I would bet. And how easy of a job would it be too to to be the driver, so to speak, but you're you're the, the car is moving autonomously, so yeah. you just have to kind of watch everything over. Yeah. I mean, you just have to be attentive for, for long shifts. The U.S. trucking industry has so much to lose and um, uh, uh, also so much to gain from autonomous trucks, right? I mean, so much to lose in that they're going to lose jobs. Millions of jobs are going to be lost. There, there's an estimate that there's about three and a half million professional truck drivers in the U.S. Some estimates are higher. Some are a little bit lower. Those are all jobs which, by and large, will be eliminated. That's just going to happen. When I say that there's a lot to gain, what I mean is that the trucking industry is responsible for and connected to many, many accidents and fatalities, and those could be reduced drastically. The idea of a tired driver making mistakes, the idea of driver error will be almost completely eliminated with this technology. I see this as unavoidable. It just doesn't make sense to think we're going to Mars in the next 10 years, which I believe that we are by by 2026. I think that uh, there will be at least an unmanned uh, uh, supply mission to Mars to start some kind of exploration there. Robotic surgery continues to advance all of these innovations. But still, in 15 years, we're going to have people susceptible to tiredness, able to drive only a portion of the day restricted by physical and legal constraints, manually driving massive trucks around our highways. It's just impossible to believe. And a fascinating angle to this, too, is at what point do we outlaw manual manual driving? Just just having people do it because yeah. we know that people are going to be responsible for more accidents than these automated vehicles are. Conservatives talk about that a lot, about the loss of freedom and just how fundamentally American it is to get out there and to drive around. And I get it. I enjoy driving in many ways. But the reality is, uh, uh, at least as far as highway trips go, and that's the initial thing here with the driverless trucks, which is it's still complex to maneuver and back in these trucks at loading docks and in cities. I mean, in, in our studio area here, a lot of trucks drive around. These are tight corners. That technology is going to be uh, further off in terms of automation. But as far as the highway driving for trucks and as far as personal driving, I would love it if on a highway trip, I didn't have to drive at all and I could just uh, do, make phone calls or send text messages, read articles, whatever. Uh, that that's going to happen. And I personally look forward to it. I think that there will be opportunities to drive no matter what. And uh, the, even if we start moving away from driving for, for transportation purposes, particularly on the highway, I don't think we're going to lose this activity of driving that many people like. 
And of course, we know that technology is going to approve too. I mean, there has been some fatalities from autonomous cars yep. and that, that has to be worked on. Yeah. And also Although just, if you actually look at the details, you, you can't necessarily attribute it to it being an autonomous vehicle per se. Yeah. I mean, I'd have to look at the story again. Yeah. Also, there's an issue of uh, passing trucks. I mean, autonomous cars want to veer off too much um, away from these trucks, as a yeah. lot of people do too. All stuff that technology, I am sure, is going to eventually figure out.